This video is brought to you by the Next Level Leadership Summit, where proximity meets power. I believe that we live in a culture and a society that's creating this instant gratification of the shit that we want. I want sex, I want money, I wanna be successful, and then I'm gonna be happy. So I'm on my way to Vegas because I'm speaking at an event, a real estate event. I only do one speaking engagement a year and it's for these guys that have supported me since day one. Since day one, 10 years ago, they put me on stage. So every single year, if my schedule permits, I fly down to Vegas and I drop some heat, drop some bombs. So here's a couple of things that we got from the coaching calls today. And, and if you wanna succeed, if, you, if you're in the road to, to becoming successful, if you're in the road to achievement, if you're in the road for greatness, you need to have fucking patience. You need to be fucking patient. Like it's just mind blowing to me the amount of people that complain that they don't have what they want yet. Like I understand, I saw a, my Facebook reminded me that five years ago I started putting in content. Five years today, I was shooting my first video and putting my first video in, in Facebook. And since then, I've done thousands of videos, thousands of posts, thousands of content, and yet, sometimes I feel like I haven't done enough. <laughs> and I get impatient, and I'm complaining, and I am looking at other people's social media, and other people's followers, and all the people's shit, and I get into this fucking drift, because I get it, I'm just like you. I, I compare myself to other people, so I get have to get myself out of that mindset, out of that mentality, because the comparison mentality is poison for your soul. Looking what other people are doing is not gonna get you what you want. You have to start looking at what the fuck you're doing, because unless you're paying attention to the shit that you're doing right now, and you're focusing on what other people are doing, you're not gonna get shit done. So at the end of the day, it's, it's all about just focusing on being appreciative of all you have, appreciating the journey, appreciating the fact that you're in the game. incredibly successful people he's working with. He's the Tony Robbins for much higher net worth individuals and just for badasses. So rules gonna come in and I honestly have no idea what he's talking about. Or going to talk about, I should say. All right, time the other light him up. So, big hand for a rule, come on, bring him up. Take a deep breath in. Somebody asked me recently, why do I work with men? Why do I just choose to work with men? I believe that we're in the middle of a storm. There's tons of support for women. There's tons of support for those who are seeking it. You see, as men, we've been conditioned. Conditioned to believe that we got this shit. Are we strong enough? We don't hurt. We don't have pain. And woman, I know that you think every time your man is turning away from you is about you. But that's the biggest lie. That's nothing to do with you. Most of the time, the shit that we're dealing with is our own inner battles. Most of the time, the shit that we're dealing with is our own inner demons. And you see, here's what we know what to do. I wanna build this fucking business, I wanna build an empire, and then everything is gonna be okay. Raise your hand if that shit is working for you. Most of you have made millions of dollars. Most of you know what to do. Like Mike said, I'm not here to motivate you. I'm not here to pump you up. 
I'm not here to be the next Tony Robbins. I believe that mindset has its limits. I believe that we live in a culture and a society that's creating this instant gratification of the shit that we want. I want sex, I want money, I wanna be successful, and then I'm gonna be happy. And as men, we are creating the next generation of unfulfilled marriages, unfulfilled careers. I work with men who have millions of dollars. And once they come through my program, they realize that they lost their purpose. That in the middle of the storm, we lose ourselves. But I had no idea that I was gonna do this shit. Fuck, when, when Mike asked me to speak seven years ago, I was trying to be the next Tony Robbins. I was trying to motivate every single person that I could get my hands on. But as I, as I went through my own storm, as I went through my own struggle, I had to make a decision. Do I wanna just impact? Or do I wanna live a legacy? See, every single one of you right here is a leader. I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe that. Mike wouldn't be here unless he believed that. But see, it's not enough that we believe. It's not enough that somebody says, man, you could do this shit. You have to believe in you. Because in the past, when I didn't believe, I sedated, I drank. Chef Vegas is a completely different view this year than 10 years ago for me. I was telling Daniel, the guy who follows me from a camera, said, if you wouldn't follow me with a camera 10 years ago, <laughs> I would be in trouble. Because the moment they realize that you're stepping to a different conscious level, the game would change. But here's what we do. We quiet that voice. That voice that's speaking to you from your heart, you quiet that voice. That voice that's telling you that no, there's something greater for you, you quiet that voice. I see, I believe that that voice speaking to you every single day, or being conditioned to believe that no, that's, that's not the voice. Let me worry about something else. Let me build a business and let me figure shit out my way. And that's the biggest lie that as men, we've been told that we're gonna figure this shit out on our own. At the leadership event where Mike was attending, I have the same platform. I let my guys speak from the heart. I give them a, a topic and they speak and every single one of them said, Raul, this program saved my life. Because even though I had millions of dollars, even though I was successful, and according to everyone outside, I was successful inside, I was ready to give up. And in my mind is, how can that be? How can we be successful? How can we have all these things that we have in our lives? How can we have all this opportunity, but yet, we feel that we don't have enough, yet, we're feeling that we're building a fucking void. I've worked with billionaires that are ready to kill themselves. Why? Because they listen to the voice in their fucking head. So hopefully today, the time that we spend together, my intention is to get you to listen to the voice in your soul, the voice in your heart that inner voice that's always been speaking to you. That intuition, some of you guys know, when it comes to a deal, you have the intuition to either go into that deal or not. And when you listen to the intuition, you go with it and you make money. When you listen, you succeed. But then when you don't listen, they say, no, don't do this, or don't get into this deal, or don't go into this business, and you override that voice, you get fucked. Because we're not in tune as men and women too. Women actually have more of that intuition. Women have more of that voice. 
man, we suck a fucking hard head. That the moment that we don't listen, the first thing that goes is our health. When you're not listening to that voice in your heart, your body comes in next. That's what happened to me 12 years ago. I started having pains in my stomach. I started drinking every single night, sedating that pain. I was not listening to the voice that says, you were born for more, Raul. No, I'm just, a, I'm just a broker. I'm just a sales guy. I just wanna make a couple million dollars here, and that's all. I'm good. But the voice kept on speaking. The voice kept on speaking. And when I didn't listen, my body reacted. And I see it all the time. If you don't listen to that, if you have the potential, if you've been called to do something greater, your body will let you know. That turns into cancer, it turns into disease. 90% of our diseases are created by worry, are created because we don't have that peace inside of us. So some of you know my story. I went to India and meditated for three weeks and started with some monks, joined Tony Robbins, followed him for five years, trying to put myself together spend half a million dollars trying to figure shit out because the other alternative was on fulfillment. As I looked at my kids, my little girl, my son, I didn't want them to have my pain. Because I guarantee you right now, if you don't deal with this shit in this generation, if you don't deal with your pain, your kids will have to deal with that. My mission is to end the suffering that as men, we give into our kids. My mission is to end and cut that conditioning so our pain doesn't transfer to the next generation. So you could deal with this pain right now, the conditioning from your father, from your grandfather, for the only generations that you've been conditioned to, and you deal with this shit now. Because if you don't deal with this shit now, you kids, your wife will end up carrying that on and that will be your legacy. So man, the good news is that if you're called to lead, you already have the capacity to deal with this. The biggest chance that I see is that men are not stepping into their power to fucking lead. We become pleasers. We're badasses in our business. We know how to make fucking money. We know how to make millions, but at home, we become the pleaser. Say, yes, honey, whatever you want. I just wanna fucking hear you. <laughs> whatever you want. And then there's a shift of polarity because the feminine energy wants a man that is in his core. The feminine energy wants to feel wanted. The feminine energy wants to feel desire. Raise your hand, woman. Can you feel your energy? Can you feel your man's energy when he wants you and desires you? Raise your hand. Every single one of you. You think you're fucking fooling somebody? No, we, they know when we turn off in our heads. They know when we come home and we're not at home because our head is in the office. At the moment that you learn to turn this off, moment that you learn not to control it, but to make your mind your weapon. That's the moment that the game changes. And that's what I help men do, train their mind. This past in January, I went to train with Navy SEALs. And Navy SEALs said, Raul, if you don't have that intuition in the SEALs, you're dead. We have six men, I wanted to make sure that we're communicating by intuition. 90% of the conversations are intuition, signs, feeling the room making sure they don't shoot the wrong enemy. But right after I left that training with the Navy SEALs, I went to train with monks. And I Raul, if you don't tap into a higher, a higher conscious level, you're gonna guide people in the wrong path. So at the event when Mike attended, I said, I need to make sure that I'm training men to be the Navy SEAL and the monk. To be able to merge those two parts of you. Because so far what I've seen is just men focusing on their business, focusing on, on succeeding, focusing on creating more shit, more shit. But at the end, that's not going to work.
What do you gain if you have all the money and all the success, but you feel like you don't have a purpose? You don't, have, you don't feel like you're making an impact. What do you gain by achieving all these things, but then your wife is not connected? Your kids are not connected. So I'm gonna take you to an exercise that I take my clients in the first conversation. I call it a reality check. Because I think we need to have a reality check. Because understand one thing, the storm is coming. The storm is coming, especially in your business. All the shit that's happening right now with the technology, all these big companies getting into this business, in the next five years you will not recognize this industry. But that's not the only storm that's coming. So you have the economic storm, the next wave. And you put in top of that, the storms that will happen naturally in your relationship. The storms that will happen naturally in your body, in your health. We need to be ready. So when the storm comes, we're mentally, mentally, physically ready to rip the benefits. But it all starts right now, getting real with what's going on. So take out a piece of paper. You don't have to share your answers. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you share this. We're gonna see where you are right now in the four areas of your life. I call it the foundation of the kingdom. Number one is your body, health-wise. We're gonna give you four options to choose from. One is fucked, the other one is shitty, one is good, the last one is great. Fuck means you don't take care of your body, you don't work out, and you don't give a shit about what you eat. You eat whatever you see, that's fucked. Shitty means you do want to work out, you do want to feel good, you do want to eat healthy, but you don't have the time, the motivation, and it's too fucking hard. That's shitty. Good is you do eat healthy, you do work out, but you're not in the best shape of your life. Great is I'm in the best shape of my life, I have a routine, I know exactly what I'm eating, I know exactly what I'm working out, and I'm feeling great. So just write down the answer, fuck, shitty, good, or great. Being, connection with the higher power. I'm not religious, I believe in the higher power. I spent 20 years in the church, I definitely don't wanna go that route. They serve my purpose and I love church and I love people who are religious. I'm just in a different journey. Fucked in your being means you don't believe in a higher power. You don't believe in anything. And you don't wanna believe. Shit, it means that you do want to believe, but you don't know if it's religion, you don't know if it's spirituality, you don't know if it's, if it's, if it's God or, 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 or the universe. You're kind of confused, but you do believe there's a higher power. That's shitty. Good means that you do have a connection with God. You do have a connection with a higher power. You do have a connection with the universe, but you don't feel guided. Great means you feel connected, you feel guided. You're living on purpose every single day and you know that everything that's happening in your life has a purpose. So are you fucked, shitty, good or great? Write it down. Business. Fuck means like every single day is how can I make more money because I don't have enough to pay the fucking bills. <laughs> fuck is like I, I know how to make money but it's just like fuck every single day it just continues to go around and around the up and down cycle. Shit, it means you're living paycheck to paycheck. Money comes in, money comes out. You know how to make money and money comes out. Good means you're cash flowing. Business is good. You're building your business. The problem with good is that it all depends on you. If you stop working, if you stop producing, if you stop selling or you stop doing the things they need to do, the business dies. Great means that you have people, you have systems, you have patterns in place to make sure that even if you walk away and even if you don't perform, you continue to create revenue. That's great. So in your business, are you fucked, shitty, good or great? In your relationships, if you're in a relationship right now, if you're married or have a partner, fuck means that the only reason that you're together is because it's too expensive to get a divorce. <laughs> there is no love, there is no sex. And you just don't want to get divorced because like, fuck, I have to give her half of the shit, so might as well just, just be there. 
Shit, it means that you do love her. You do have something in common, but there is no sex, there is no intimacy, and you're more like roommates. That's shitty, roommates. Sexless marriages. Tons of sexless marriages going on right now. And woman is not you, it's us. I guarantee you that every single man that loses the testosterone, the desire to make love to his woman, is because he's not owning himself. Good means that there is sex, there's intimacy, you love her, she loves you, but there's no passion. There's no passion anymore. You lost your passion. And great means that there's passion, there's sex, there's intimacy. You can't wait to be with her and she can't wait to be with you. Even sometimes you guys want to tear each other apart, but at the end there's passion. So are you fucked, shitty, good, or great? Now take the average of those four. Usually what I get is either a shitty plus or good. <laughs> Most of are like, man, I'm great in my business, but I'm fucked in my marriage. Is that a good way to look at life? Like, hell no. If, if you're not looking at those four areas, if you're not looking at where you are right now, and if you're looking at your reality, and if your reality right now is good, might as well be fucked. Why? Because I know every single one of you, in your mind, you were born for more. In your mind, you were born for greatness. So the struggle, the, the internal battle that you have is not that you don't know what to do, is that you're good. And that's the worst place to be for a man that was destined for great. When I looked at this, I looked at, I looked at my life like, fuck, I'm, I might as well be fucked if I'm good. And I started asking myself, why is it that I continue to sabotage my life? It's because I was chasing success my entire life. I was chasing success my entire life instead of pursuing greatness. There's nothing worse than somebody says, I know I could be this, but I'm going to settle for this. I know I could be great, but I'm going to settle for good. Would you rather have good sex or great sex? Would you rather have a good business or a great business? Would you rather have a good connection with, with, a, with a higher power or a great connection? We only get what we need to tolerate in life. I started thinking, okay, what, what do I want? That's the first question to break the pattern because here's what happens. Most of us, We've been hypnotized by the culture. It's called the hypnotic rhythm. The comparison game. Well, I'm not as bad as my brother-in-law. I'm not as bad as my family members. I'm good. The comparison game will kill progress. And the other hand is like, fuck, I wanna be like this guy. But I'm not like that, so then, therefore you discount who you are. So again, you, the comparison game kills you. And then you start regretting. So the first thought is comparing yourself to make you feel good. That's the reason that we love all these reality TV shows because like we look at their, their lives like, oh shit, I'm not as fucked as them, so I'm good. That's what we love to, to intake that information. But then at night, we get down on ourselves with regret. Shit, I knew I had to make that deal. I knew I had to make that call. I knew I had to make that, that, that shit happen. But then we start regretting. And regret is poison to your soul. So you have comparison, you have regret. What's the third thing that happens? Sedation. You ignore that voice. You ignore that calling. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm good compared to this person. Shit, I know I should have done this. But you know what, let me just fucking ignore it. Let me ignore the problem. What happens when you ignore a health problem? Does it go away or does it get bigger? What happens? It gets bigger. What happens when you ignore your PL and your business? Does it magically all of a sudden money starts happening? I wish it would happen. If you ignore the signs in your business, your business will suffer. If you ignore the signs in your marriage, your marriage will suffer. If you ignore the signs in your purpose or your connection with a higher power, you will suffer. So then we go from pain to suffering. And 
And that's what happens. It starts eating away in your soul, eating away at your conditioning. See, what we do is we help you use pain for fuel. Because how many of you guys, raise your hand if you have enough pain in your life to, to fill up a, a good tank of fuel. Raise your hand. All of us. All of us have a lot of pain. And we live in the, the most successful country in the world that people are dying to come in. But yet, we get down on ourselves every single day. But what if we could use this pain to fuel your business, to fuel your marriage, to fuel your purpose? See, that's all I do when guys come into my event and Mike was there, I was like, man, Raul, all you do is just dig in the pain. Dig in the pain. And just like he said, every single guy said, I have pain, but I'm gonna use it. And here's I'm gonna use it. Oh, my wife asked me for a divorce? Well, here's I'm gonna use it. I love my wife, so I'm gonna fight for her. I'm gonna be able to see. If she, does, if she doesn't wanna accept my love, I'm gonna walk away, and it's okay. So every single time that there's pain, my guys use it as fuel. Because pain is inevitable. Pain will happen in your life. You will lose clients, you will lose relationships, you will lose friendships, but how you use that pain to learn from the mistakes and learn from the shit that you've been through is gonna determine who you become. So the first step is what do I want? So write this down, what? What do I want? So what do I want? So if you look at your average, if you're a shitty plus, what do you want? Great, all right, so perfect. Write this, I want a great. I want great, and I'm not willing to tolerate anything less than great. So once you get clear that, and some of you say, Raul, really, I, there is no great in my marriage. You don't know my wife, or you don't know my husband. If that's the story that you continue to tell yourself, you're only gonna get that. But if you really want great, you need to write that down and say, okay, I'm not willing to live this earth until I have a great business, a great marriage, a great connection with a higher power, and a great health. Because if you don't know what you want, you're never gonna get it. So the first step is, is what you want. The second step is who? Who do you need to become to get that? Who do you need to become to have that? You think that one day I just realized, oh, I wanna be a motivational speaker. So Mike, you put me on your stage and you know, I wanna motivate people. I realized that I only had that capacity to a certain level. I need to sharpen my skills. I've done over 2,000 videos in the last five years. This month, I'm gonna have three events. The first year, everything started here in Las Vegas. I put my first event at the Wynn Hotel. I decided to put an event, my first event, 2013. I think I spoke here May of 2013. My first event was December, two weeks before Christmas, at the Wynn Hotel. Look at how I try to sabotage my event. Two weeks before Christmas, who goes to a program two weeks before Christmas? So as I call my friends, as I call the people that I knew, I said, I'm putting this event, you know, this three days, you know, what are we gonna get? Oh, don't worry about it, it's gonna be awesome. I call it next level experience. He said, yes, I'm gonna be there. Yes, I'm gonna be there. So I had 100 people at the Wynn Hotel, two weeks before Christmas, 2013. I remember them coming in and I'm, I'm in the stage and I had no idea what I was going to do. So I did the best thing that I could do. The best impression of Tony Robbins. At the end of the day, you were like, man, Raul, I love your energy, man. You're like the Latin Tony. And then at that moment, I realized like, fuck, I'm a fraud. That wasn't my content. That wasn't who I was supposed to be. See, in the past, I would have probably taken that as a compliment. In the past, I would have taken that, yeah, I'm the, I'm the Latin Tony, so I'm gonna take that. But this time, because I was increasing my capacity, it didn't feel right. So I remember the next day, the second day, everybody was excited and, and they were re you know, ready to hear more. And I come to the stage and I told the fucking truth. I told the truth. I said, I'm, I'm afraid. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I just have this burning desire to do something more. And I spoke for like an hour and a half and everyone in that chair had tears in their eyes. Because for the first time, I was honest with myself in front of other people. 
And I remember asking God, like, God, don't put me in this position because I'm not ready to be vulnerable. I'm not re ready to share my story. I'm not ready to share the shit that I'm going through. And I remember crying in the bathroom at the Wynn Hotel. And the voice says, if you don't take advantage of this now, you're never gonna break through. So then I put the next event at the Wynn Hotel. And this time, I tried to hide. I had 20 speakers lined up to speak, and I was like the MC. I had like 10 minutes in stage, the second event. People was like, that's an awesome event, Raul. But we didn't even hear the story. We didn't hear you talk, because I was hiding. You see the pattern that we go through. The first, we try to sabotage. And the second, we try to hide. The third event, I did one in, in New York, and it was my time. Had nobody in the stage, and it was Raul for three days. And I was scared shitless. I felt like I didn't have my certainty. But I was willing to break through and overcome that fear. Because I knew that who I was becoming was more important than who I was at that moment. Who you becoming right now will determine what you want. Who you becoming right now will give you what you're looking for. The version of yourself right now doesn't have the skills, doesn't have the capacity, doesn't have the intelligence to get a life of greatness. And the moment that you realize that you are your worst enemy and you are the one in control, then you could just work on yourself by 1% better a day. And that's all I've done. That's all I've done the last five years. Every single day I've gotten 1% better. 1% better. Every single day, my skill level increased by 1%. Every single day, my confidence, my certainty increased by 1%. Every single day, my bank account increased by 1%. And in the beginning, yeah, it was a couple of dollars and I, you know, it, was, it wasn't significant. But now we have men that are paying me a quarter of a million dollars to coach the one-on-one -on -one because they see the value and I could earn the right to ask for that because I know my value. The Raul five years ago would have shit in his pants if somebody would have said, I'm gonna give you 10,000 for you to coach me because I didn't have the certainty. So before we end, what I wanna do is I wanna give you a tool to use in order for you to build that certainty by 1%. See, I believe that every single one of us have to, has to have a process. Navy SEALs talk about the box process, that they get themselves to quiet the mind. They get themselves to actually get themselves in a state to go to war. So the problem is that as men, how many of you guys are at war all the time? Raise your hand if you're constantly at war. We, we live in war. <laughs> That's not news. But we have to learn how to turn off that warrior. We have to turn, have to turn the warrior off so the king could rise. So put everything in, uh, out, just leave everything in your table. <coughs> Sit comfortably. I'm gonna guide you for a three minute guided process. Take five deep breaths. Put your hands in the top of your, your legs. Take five deep breaths. One. Two, three, another one. Close your eyes. I want you to feel the energy at the bottom of your feet. Coming up your legs, into your heart, into your forehead. on the top of your head. Now bring that energy from the top of your head to your forehead, your chest, then your legs at the bottom of your feet. And take a deep breath in. And think of the person or people that you love the most right now. 
Think of them right now and imagine all the love, all the joy that you experienced with them. And just look at them right now and absorb the love and the joy. And this is why you're doing what you do. And go to a memory or a time in your life when you felt connected with this person. And just feel the love and the connection with this person. And let that energy fill your heart. And let that energy fill your purpose. And feel how that energy is building in your body. Center that energy. What will you let happen to this person? Would you let any harm come to them? Would you let any danger come to that person? What I want you to do right now is think of a earliest memory of your childhood. I want you to focus on the version of you when you were a little kid. And I want you to think about that little kid right now and send him the same love, the same energy that you thought about the person that you love the most. And I want you to tell that version of yourself, that two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old version of yourself that everything is going to be all right. That all the pain, all the struggle was worth it. Now merge that version of yourself, that childlike version of yourself and bring it right next to the person that you love the most and have that person love Joy, fill your heart. And take a deeper thing. Feel that energy building, 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 knowing that nothing will get in the way of this that you will fight for this kid, that you will fight for these people, and feel that energy in your body right now as it shifts, as it connects to a deeper version of yourself. Feel as it's building. Feel it, and it continues. Now imagine that life that you wanted, that great life, that vision of greatness. And as you hear, have your eyes closed, I want you to stand up. If your eyes closed, stand up. If your eyes closed, stand up. Would you repeat after me? I am the fucking storm! Louder, I am the fucking storm! I am the fucking storm! Feel that energy in your body. Feel that energy in your soul and let that mantra and that voice come from your heart, from your soul, not from your mind. Think about the person that you love the most. Think about that kid, that child that you promised that everything was gonna be okay. And repeat for them. I am the fucking storm! Is this version of yourself the 
one that you could tap into at will that could make shit happen? Can this version of yourself create the life that you want? When you begin to heal that child, when you focus on the love that you have around you, you will get out of your fucking head and you will become the storm. Take a deep breath in. Open your eyes. Thank you. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And if you're ready to lead with power, go to the link in the description and sign up for the Next Level Leadership Summit, where proximity meets power. The storm is coming. Everybody saw it in the horizon.